Uh, before I start, I'd like to show you a short video clip so you could understand why we were interested in this issue. I'm sorry. Competition, competition, competition. Haven't we competed so hard? If you are Korean or if you have lived in Korea long enough, you will be very familiar with the word competition. I believe that the severe competition was the main force that helped Korea to develop economically from the ruin of the war. And based on that, Korea became the role model of the 20th century. So today when I'm talking about competition dilemma, I'm not trying to minimize the effect of competition or to tell you we shouldn't compete. But today I would like to talk about competition in a slightly different angle. As we competed so hard, how has our society changed? For the first time in Korea, it's years in their lives conducted a survey related to competition. We asked people how severe they felt about competition in our society. Out of hundred or people said 10 years ago they felt competition degree was about 58.1 and now last year about 76. And they, say, they said if you compete as now after 10 years it will grow to 85%, so it will get worse. From the age group, the people in their 40s and the people in their 20s felt most competition. That this age group might make you think of the Seoul City mayor election that was in last year. A lot of people were very shocked with the results because a lot of the younger people were voting. And also that the people from their 20s to their 40s showed a certain pattern that was very familiar. The election of the Seoul City Mayor was held in October 26, and our survey was held in September 16 to October 5. And also our survey sh the people showed from the 20s to the 40s felt most frustrated related to competition. Eighty-three point four percent said they were stressed daily based because of competition. What category do you think people feel most competitive about? Competition for entrance examinations, competition getting a job, competition inside of the office, 
So the other 90 percent will have to work and exactly small and medium sized companies. But the wage gap is not much smaller. It's not getting smaller at all. Over the last 20 years, income inequality in Korea has gotten worse. Until the 1980s, they say that income equality was pretty good. Even though our welfare system wasn't that good because of the rapid economic growth, they had a pretty good fair distribution. But from the 1990s, the middle class has shrunk and the lower class has been larger. We ask people, are there winners from the most important competition in their life? 44% said they were losers. Excessive competition lowers personal happiness and raises social unrest and distrust. Unrest in the society, you might want to have someone to count on or lean on. But the survey shows, compared to other OECD countries, Korea lacks personal social network support. That isn't any, anyone to count on when they need help. And this is not all. The OECD countries' suicidal rate is dropping but Korean suicidal rate is rising. If you see the cause of this, it's even shocking. From teenagers to people in their 30s, the first cause of death is suicide. And even people in their 40s and their 50s, after cancer, the most cause of death is suicide. This dark side mark of think that maybe we are on this stage where it's orange, that more and more we compete because we don't benefit from it, but the cost is getting higher. Maybe we're in this orange zone that is a dilemma of the competition. This picture is a red queen from the Alice in Wonderland. If you see the follow-up story, red queen runs with Alice as fast as she could. But even though they're running so fast, they remain in the same place. Maybe Korea has fallen into this red green effect where we lose our power and lose our efficiency. Maybe Korea's competition might have fallen into the dilemma. Already in 1995, European scholars had raised this issue about intensive competition. 90 scholars under the European Commission made a report called Limits of Competition. We met the originator of the concept of Limits of Competition, Dr. Ricardo Pizzerla. to see what kind of dilemma that Korean competition has fallen into. I think if we have to put one word into what people feel these days, I think the word will be instabil instabil stability. instability. The growing instability is felt by people from every angle. <laughs> 
Disability is making young people to just hope for any stable job. So we say that our job market is very competitive, but actually only a few jobs are being very competitive. So the jobs that everybody wants are very competitive, but only those jobs are competitive. If you see 2011 ninth grade civil servant examination competition rate, it was 93.1. <coughs> In the seventh grade civil servant exam competition rate, it was way over 100, 100 to 1. And even if you ask young children what we want to become, more than half of them answer one out of ten jobs. And even those ten jobs are not new or adventurous but it's jobs that from 30 years ago that our parents always emphasized on. The second dilemma is about competitiveness. We have all sacrificed so much to compete because at least we thought the results were rewarding and our competition was competitive. This is a middle school math and science ranking that we like to brag about. If you see the most recent results, Korea ranks second in math and fourth in science. But the strange thing, <coughs> the interest in math is 44th out of 48 countries. The confidence, we're 43rd. The interest in science, we're 29th of 29 countries. The confidence, was 27th. So they have high grades, but they're not interested in it. They're not confident in it. They only have good grades, and they only study because that they were told to study. If you look at the hours Korean students spent on studying, the competitiveness is even weaker. This is OECD PISA results that Korea scored number one in math. When we compare each country by equal number of time they spend, Korea earns only 61 points, when the average is 75 points. It shows that why they got good grades is because they studied so much. It's not that we were effective in the time that we spent. And also because we're so obsessed in rankings that this brings another problem. I'll show you a
it's okay to working hours per year. Priya is number one from the OECD countries. But the labor productivity is not even half of the United States. Is our private after school classes effective? Data from a KTA study that followed a large number of students over a number of years show that the students who didn't take private active school classes and study by their own, but higher grades. Especially students who study on their own in high school, got better grades in college, and also was earning more <coughs> for job. But the private class didn't have any effect on college rates or also the wages. The third dilemma is related to the way that we compete. According to the World Economic Forum, different countries have different characteristics by their development level. If the GDP per capita is less than 2,000, you are a factory-driven country, and if you're in the factory-driven country, you should be supplying resources and labor. If your GDP per capita is $3,000 to $9,000, you're in an efficiency-driven country, and you should raise productivity. But if, it, if it's $17,000, more than $17,000, you're an innovation-driven country, and you should be developing new technology and new markets. Korea's GDP per capita is over 20,000, so Korea is in the innovation driven country. But I wonder if we are still competing as when we were in the efficiency driven country, and just thinking about efficiency instead of thinking new ideas, new technology, and new markets. If you're in an innovation-driven country, you should be having more improvement-driven opportunities. But in Korea, we have more necessity-driven business, necessity-driven opportunities. So even if people are starting the business, use it to maintain their livelihood. In addition, a lot of the companies that are just starting are mostly wholesale or retail restaurants. And because we don't share information or know-how, we're failing for the same reason in the same place again and again. And also when we compare jobs, which are in the creative class, Korea has fewer than one-third of other advanced countries. Korea lack of innovative minds. So only four venture companies have grown to more than one trillion won of capital. And when we see the global 500 list for the last 10 years, it wasn't really that much of a difference. Meaning that if you're in a small company, you should be able to dream someday you might be a little size, medium sized company. And if you're in a medium sized company, you should be able to dream someday I will become a large company. But right now in Korea, this kind of virtual circle in the enterprise is not happening. Another problem is related to the rules of competition. When we ask people what is the most important principle in competition, 67.1% say equal opportunity, and 56.2% say they are rules. So we ask, how fair is competition in Korea? 67.2% said not fair. The obstacles for fair competition, they said, was personal connection, corruption, academic clicks. The major organizations that need fairness the most, the courts, they just made large companies. Government, the prosecution, National Assembly, had all fewer than 40 points out of 100 on the issue of <coughs> trust. 
The Corruption Procession Index, prepared by Transparency International. Korea ranks 39 from 178 countries. And for the last 10 years, we haven't improved that much. The corruption rate is embarrassingly high. We ask people if you could win. Are you willing to cheat or break the world? 56.6% said no, they won't cheat. But 27.4% said they would. And if you look into the 27.4%, the people who have higher income said that they were willing to cheat some more. I think this kind of shows why in Korea the rich is not respected that people think that they are like this, or actually they think that they could act like this. And I think this is one of the big problems that we have to solve. We also asked about equal opportunity. Six out of ten in Korea said chances are not equal. So, half of the people said they can't accept the results of competition. Next, we analyze the uses of a new media to see the age group of 20 to 40, who are the main competitors in Korea, to get a better idea how competition is perceived. SDS worked with Taeyang, a social analysis company, and looked at the number of tweets related to the world competition from January to February in 2011. From January to February, uh, September, to January to September, we looked at the tweets that included the word competition. They came to 360,999 uh, 360, cases. It's about 1,000 tweets a day 40,000 tweets a month related to the word competition. The day that the word competition was mentioned the most was April 8th, when the fourth type university students committed suicide. <coughs> so from April 8th to 10th, we look at the tweets and try to see what words were linked with it. Extreme, responsibility, tragedy, which was mentioned with losers, stigma, which showed that effective competition was linked with harmful consequences, loneliness, isolation, was mentioned with cooperation, consideration, and parallel capitalism, problems, college kids without work, suicidal issues, with reflections and solutions which showed that people were talking about the way to solve this problem. I think one of the most important issues related to competition is related to the social safety net. Let's see one of the case of Sangyong Moro's company, which is not settled even after two years.
also I know like the street that were related to kind of world's favorite dispute. <clears throat> the interesting point is we could see the movement of people who were not turning their back on those who were left behind. If you see that they were saying, uh, if, if, if they had any psychiatrist uh, who is willing to help, they're asking people together. And also that if they had anyone who could help, that help them. Uh, actually, the, in the video, they said only uh, 17 people committed suicide, but right now it, it, it became 21 people who were fired committed suicide. So keep on happening is not the thing that finished, it's keep on going. When we look into the streets related to the Samuel Moros incident, First, it looked like they were just talking about how the laborers were doing. But soon we saw a singer who was talking about a performance for the laborers' children. And it spread to a psychiatrist who volunteered to treat the laborers. They were not just talking about it, but a lot of people were donating their talents to help, help out. But from this analysis, what was more interesting was when we looked at the key talent donation project, which were repeated more than 10 times. Even though their goals and activities were different, they were all linked. I like to believe that even when we have been hurt by the excessive competition, it is showing that the Korean DNA of cooperation and coexistence is still very much alive in our hearts and in the way it's showing it. Then what can we do to make the competition more positive for the sustainable growth of our nation? First, I think we should make the competition more diverse. We should make our society where people can do what they want to do. They can compete with what they want to do. And still being able to have a good living. The requirement for diversity is a minimum welfare. I think that is one of the reasons why so many people these days is talking about welfare. We should strengthen our social safety net and extend welfare. We also should give second chances to the losers. We have to be a society where failure teaches them a good lesson so they become smarter and stronger, not to make them give up everything. Almost 80% of people say the society doesn't care enough for the losers. To take the society more diverse and also to care more for the losers, it's all related to welfare revenue. So we ask people, are you willing to pay more for this reason? For a stronger social safety net for lodging the welfare? 51% said they will pay more. I think also the education should change. In the industrial age, not making defective products was most important. But in the information age, thinking differently, Competition for new ideas are more important. <coughs> we should be nurturing more creative people, making people to think on their own, and also people that care for the people around. Recently, I heard a very shocking story. In front of SDS, there is a one elementary school, and because their wall is really low, people walking by to see what's happening in the playground. And one of our seniors saw this and was telling us the story. They had two kids running together, and one of their kids fell. And we think, and they will turn around and go to their friends and say, oh, you're all right. But what happened was they turned around and start criticizing the kid who fell, and were telling them, because of you, we're getting late. Oh. If they treat their friends like that, how will they act to strangers? I'm raising two kids, too. And I think what happened is we were too upset, upset and advancing. So if they studied well, if they win the competition, 
we forgive them for anything. But I think it's really a time we should think, what kind of people are we raising? Is this something we really want for the kids? And also, is this something we really want for our society? Maybe it's about the rules. We have to make people believe that if you break the law, if you break the rules from the competition, you will be punished, and there won't be any exceptions. I put it as show us a Korean Enron case. Enron was a world-leading energy company, and it was the seventh largest company in the United States. Once it was a company that all American workers wanted to work. But when the company went bankrupt because of a planned accounting fraud, the president went to, the, went to jail for 24 years and four months. And also the founder and president had to pay huge amounts of money for punitive damages. I would like to see fair rules, transparent procedures, with no exceptions. From the legal circle, and also from the Fair Trade Commission. I think the business paradigm is changing also. The companies, not just the ones who are thinking about their profit, but companies who think about consumers, and also trying to open up and cooperate with more SMEs, are the ones who are being respected, and also actually doing better in the market. I think that is the reason that the coexistence is the key survival equation of the business these days. And we should stop, I think, um, to stop the competition that treats people as a part. What should competition really be for? Shouldn't it be for the people? I think we should really compete for the better circumstances for the people. And the people shouldn't be treated as a part. When we asked how many great leaders does Korea have, 60.7 said there is no great leaders in our society. The government should be more responsible and people should be more participative in government and political issues. If you see OECD countries, if you're more educated, usually you're more participating in political issues. But in Korea, more that you're educated, you're less politically participating in political issues or social issues. I think this should be changed. When we did a research with Seoul National University about social quality, it showed that the district where the social quality was really high was the district where people participated more in political issues and social issues. So if you want our neighborhood to have a high quality of life, we should be participating more in social and political issues. If competition is an instinct, cooperation is an instinct too. And I think Korea's economic miracle was not based on the concept that only I want to live well. If people don't empathize with other people, they become nervous. And if they become nervous, their actions come see more severely because they have to survive. So what is important is to create a society that is more hopeful for our future. If the politicians, if the politicians could show us the way, that would be great. But if they don't, I think the civil society could try to do something from what they could do, starting from a small thing. Also, this year is election year, so I think the voters to show their ability. I think we should compete, but I think we should compete on things that what they really want to do. They should be competing with themselves. That to be a better person, to do something better, and I think the competition should be with yourself. There's an African proverb. If you want to go quickly, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. I hope your long journey is never a lonely one. Thank you.